A trip to Oab takes about a half a day. The first thing all duty patrolmen are required to do is report to the patrol orientation master. Duty papers have to be filled, sponsor certification and brain size identification must be made. Brain transfer papers also have to be verified with Central Galaxy Inclusion Department for authenticity. There have been a number of forged brain transfer papers found recently and the CGID is cracking down on the illegal activity. Brains from Scepter Homo sapiens have turned up in Zimna electrobodies more than once. Last war, seen, war season alone, 50 alien brains were found in all on Ob. There's a thriving business of illegal brain transferring going on on planet Verton. The authorities have tried to shut down these illegal transfer stations, but they can't find them all, so the process continues. Because the economy on Scepter is such bad shape, many high-lib Scepters with brains in the 1600 uh, centimeter range don't want to wait for the Galaxy Inclusion Department to certify their brains, which is the first step in the long process that would eventually allow them to re receive transfers into electrobodies. They figure these illegal transfer stations are the quickest way to bypass all that bureaucracy. There's also a thriving business selling used and imitation Z501 electrobodies. There's a risk of bearing failure when these old or copied electrobodies are used, but not being able to find suitable work for any brain si for your brain size can cause anyone to take risks. Once the transfer is made, they are supplied with forged brain transfer papers and sent off to one of the many patrol domes. Once inside the patrol dome, they sneak aboard a supply ship returned to Zimnil. Zimnil Planet Protection Patrol tries to catch these planet jumpers, but the acceptors have always been ten steps ahead of them. The scepters are a very resourceful lot. Once Kinam and Inu had been checked in, they had to go to the central lab center for their brain scan and lab count evaluation. When the Zimnel patrolman signs up for the war department, war duty on the brain has to be evaluated to, ter to determine what job is best suited for that brain powder, brain power of the patrolman. It is done to match brain to duty. One can have a high lab count but still be less qualified to work on electro beam controllers than a patrolman with a less lab count who has studied electro beam science at some brain enhancement center specialized in electro technology. For example, the four patrolmen assigned to the patrol, patrol dome electro blasters are rated SEI or patrolmen who have supreme electro interest or electroheads as they are called back on Zimnil. These patrolmen are classified HE as hermit electroids. It is determined that HE patrolmen have commingling defects because they do not conform to normal patrol association. Again, it's part of the brain to duty matching system. Another reason new patrolmen must have their brain lab count evaluated is so that the proper uniform can be issued. Because all electro people look alike, uniform identification is the only way to separate and identify various brain powers. The low lab count patrolman must wear a full-bodied light blue uniform with red trim. The higher lab count patrolman wears a long dark blue garment trimmed in blue and with silver ornaments. They have an old logo on the front. The patrol dome commander wears a similar outfit trimmed in gold. The flectons also have a wardrobe identification system. Their system, however, is based on brain power. It is not based on brain power. It is based on a traditional organic homo sapien system of political and financial power. The most powerful being the fleck, fleck masters who wear red robes with gold trim. In the second tier are the fleck lords who wear a pinkish robe with red pinstripes and dark red trim. The lowly fleck men wear one-piece pink jumpsuits. The Fleck Master and the Fleck Lord outfits have patches with the letter F on the front, while the Fleck men have a center patch of two crosses cross wrenched with the letter F in the center. Two other uniforms found in the dome are worn by the Plutons and the Vertons. The Pluton Gonforce believers wear white robes with a bright red cross lightning strike symbol across the front. The red cross lightning strike symbol is a blend of several ancient religious symbols found on various planets throughout the galaxy. 
planets that have or have, have had a belief system which includes a firm belief in an all-seeing, all-knowing God. These uniforms are easy to spot from a distance, making it easier for those who wish to avoid contact with these religious zealots to find a quick alternative route. The Vertons, who have no power or prestige in the dome, are forced to wear nondescript image-coated clothing. Their one-piece garments are dark brown in color with no frills. That makes them easy. That makes them little, a little more acceptable. It also makes them less noticeable because they blend in with the dark tunnels where they work. They have a gear patch logo with a large number on the front for easy identification in the event someone needs to report an individual worker's transgressions or lazy work habits.